This is what you shall do. Love the earth and sun and the animals. Despise riches. Give alms to everyone that asks. Stand up for the stupid and crazy. Devote your income and labor to others. Hate tyrants. Argue not concerning God. Have patience and indulgence toward the people. Take off your hat to nothing known or unknown, or to any man or number of men. Go freely with powerful, uneducated persons, and with the young, and with the mothers of families. Read these leaves in the open air every season of every year of your life. Re-examine all you have been told at school or church or in any book. Dismiss whatever insults your own soul and your very flesh shall be a great poem and have the richest fluency, not only in its words, but in the silent lines of its lips and face and between the lashes of your eyes and in every motion and joint of your body. Walt Whitman Welcome to the Lost Traveler podcast. I'm your host, Henry Cameron Allen. And today we are very pleased and excited to welcome Dr. Olayenka Oladiran. Did I get it right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Dr. <laughs> Yenka is a motivational speaker. He's a published author. He is a uh, fitness and life coach. And Boy, the list goes on and on. You have multiple degrees from everything from civil engineering to construction management and finally a doctor of philosophy. How did you get civil engineering to philosophy? <laughs> Quite interesting. <laughs> Quite interesting. Um, as I always said, like I, I came from a family of um, teachers. So my dad uh, has sort of retired now. And um, my late mom was actually doing a master's just before she passed away. So basically, oh. we came from a family where <laughs> education was a priority. And um, it was supposed to be the bedrock of everything we were supposed to do. Um, and it was embedded in us from very young. And I still remember the age of six, seven, uh, where my dad was studying. We used to study right beside him until late mm. at night. And, you know, it was it was crested in us from a very young age that it was important to be educated, and um, educated with the right stuff. And I think what has happened over the years is just getting that discipline and that um, attitude, the same principles, and now actually like focusing it in different areas of my life, which needed development. And basically going into school and studying and studying engineering and going from a normal um, engineering degree to doing a master's in construction management and then uh, went on to do a PhD afterwards uh, as being revolutional. <laughs> and uh, yeah, to say the least. Yeah, yeah the, the process actually was uh, a building a building process for me and a growth process most especially and uh, i think the very interesting thing was that at the end of the day when i finished it i still asked myself so what's next <laughs> yeah. yeah well you know we have to keep asking that question yeah because in in this world of of constant change and on a universal and very dramatic scale as we're seeing right now um you know, all 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 possibilities are are laid out before us. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that's what excites me about your work and 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 you you're a visionary in this time, and and you have found some some gold. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> I <was looking> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and I want to talk about that, and especially you grew up in Nigeria. Yes, yes, yes I did. And was it a, a, a large city or was it a smaller community? What was your 
a large family? Um, I think um, I, let, let, I'll, I'll start from when I was well, basically I was born in the United Kingdom in Birmingham. City. Yeah. yeah. So my dad used to be uh -huh. yeah, well, a lot of us. We used to um, um, we were all um, here. And my, yeah. uh, so we moved that back to Nigeria in the early 80s and now established there my dad was a lecturer and so he moved um, after some time to the northern part kind of like the middle belt it's called niger state um mm -hmm. we moved up north kind of and that's where we actually lived most of our lives and uh, we didn't really because i'm from the west basically um, i originate from the west from the yoruba tribe and we didn't really yeah. stay there too long after we arrived i think about a couple of years or so before we moved up north but the thing is that I grew most of my life. I I, I grew up most of the, um I my, most of my life was up north, and the it, the culture and everything was different. And what what we realized yeah. that even growing up, we didn't really grow up with our close family because we moved up and most of our family were in the west. So uh, mm. we didn't really have that interaction of always going for holidays. It wasn't a kind of a norm when we were growing up. So it was like. Yeah. Where we were, did what we did, where we were, and we just, you know, kind of got used to it. So it was a small town in, it's called Mina, and it's a small town mm -hmm. in Niger State. But it was, it was a great place to grow up because it was quiet. It was kind of a countryside because there was a lot of farmland. There was a lot of things to do. So we got ourselves really dirty growing up. I think like we learned a lot of life skills growing up. So I think... Um, yeah, it, it was quite interesting growing up up there, and most of what we or most of what I know today, what I've learned today, what I've built on today, actually happened in Mina, Niger State, Nigeria. And what brought you back to the UK finally? I mean, was it was it to pursue your doctorate, or what was your motivation to to leave that beautiful, idyllic, magical place and and go back to the uh, back to the UK yeah so you know what they always say like you know when you're somewhere and you felt that you've exhausted <laughs> your resources you're looking yes. for a new challenge so the fact that I was born in the UK meant that I have dual nationality so um, I'm British as well as I'm Nigerian and mm -hmm. the great thing about it was um, when I finished university, we have this one year service period in Nigeria where you go into the, um, you do some like training with the parliamentary and um, you go through some teaching experience as well. And that will take place over a period of one year. And after that, you know, you want to get a job and stuff like that and just continue. But I think the way it worked for me was like, I was actually like, I was gearing to leave even before then because like, you know what? I, I finished my time here. It's time for me to go and stuff like that. But I think as I continued to go through the reins and went for my service, I got a job with the bank. So I actually worked mm -hmm. in the bank for about a year. And then I just thought to myself, I said, this is not what I really want to do. This is not what my life. I want to go and do something else. And I believe that by relocating, I would you know, be able to do that. Um, and basically living the banking industry was just, okay, you know what, what? else do we need to do after this so coming back to the uk um about 2007 was like more of okay i wanted to go on to continue my education so basically at this mm. time i already had a, a b engine civil engineering so i was just going further to do a master's degree and um in 2008 i was able to go into loughborough university and that's where i uh, did my one year masters and after that you know i now had um i had like i still remember yeah when i was um, in school i remember my supervisor asked me he said this project you're doing that we could actually <laughs> use it for something really good and if we really work on it that we could actually do a phd in it i said no i don't want any phd i don't want anything to do with phd i just want to finish my masters and get up and <laughs> literally did i know that in about six months i received a message from my dad saying that there was an opportunity for phd and uh, someone had sent it to him and i should just apply for it and i just applied for it and at that time there was this credit crunch thing you know the economy was really bad and i applied for it and um you know, as things went through, favor got through, I was able to get a scholarship and I was, I got the course funded for a PhD for three years in Brunel University. So that's the, how my PhD story came in. I didn't actually plan to do a PhD, 
but providence and and favor and i believe that sometimes yeah. we just work things in mysterious way i didn't plan for it but i think it was part of the great grand plan that i was supposed to go and you know get into a part of my life i never wanted to but i think it, it actually formed um, a lot of things that i have today so i'm grateful that i was able to get into it and we're going to take a brief pause right now to hear a word from our sponsor well i think you're you're a prime example of being open we did a, a podcast i think it was my yeah it might have been my third or fourth one on opening to pivot yeah yeah <clears throat> it's all about meeting the moment mm -hmm. right and and seeing those doors open seeing those opportunities sometimes unexpectedly mm -hmm. arise mm -hmm. you know by providence as you say and and having the courage to to make a complete shift <laughs> in your life. yeah you know and yeah. sometimes it's it's you know a person that we meet mm -hmm. right that, that becomes our our partner or spouse mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it's a, a professional door that opens sometimes it's both and and all right. together so That's um true. so so now you're focused on you know, you talked about uh, having a period of service, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and, and that's what we are talking about today. We're, but we're not talking about service as in military training. Or, I mean, there's so many <laughs> ways of, of being of service. Yeah. Um, but service as your life's purpose. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's a place where I think you and I resonate mm -hmm. um, very, very deeply. Mm -hmm. uh, because that has been where our paths have brought us personally and professionally so talk a little bit about your perspective on on being of service what was that pivotal moment that brought you there um I, 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 it's it's really good yeah you know when when you ask them when, when people ask okay say, what what is service what, what what why are you so into service and you know we do this exercise sometimes we want to know what our gifts our abilities are but I think for me, service comes so natural to me mm. that it comes so natural to me that it's it's a life for me. Like I don't have to think about it. It just happens as a way of life for me. And I remember that like I'm, I always, you know, whatever I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to always make reference to when we were growing up um, because that was, you know, the bedrock of everything yeah. that I am today. And, you know, yeah. growing up in a place like Mina, as I said before, and growing up in a niche family where the, the, the focus of the family was, you know, we have to, we have to um, put things together. We have to build over time, but not just building, but we have to serve as well. So even when we went to church growing up, it was about where are you going to walk? Where are you going to serve? What position are you going to serve? Even at the age of six, seven, where are you going to, you know, what which area are you going to work um work at you know with your talents and abilities so mm. that was already ingrained in us as we're growing up so by the time we got much more matured we were now taking responsibilities and those responsibilities actually were like training ground for us so this responsibility was like you have to serve so when you go you have to write a report you have to read the report for people to to understand what you did the last week then you don't just leave it at that then you have to take minutes and then you have to so that was a way of serving people with information mm -hmm. and so learning all those things growing up and then you have to be in front you have to tell people you know you have to give people instructions on what to do and how to do it that was another way of service so leadership service everything just coming together but i think for me service makes more sense in a way that it just becomes a way of life not something that someone forces you to do now when someone is forcing you to do it it you you might not get the fulfillment but for me the fulfillment i get from service is actually the reaction i get when people are being served and that's why it makes me like really excited whenever i say oh yeah we're going to serve people we're going to do this we're going to do that it's almost like, yes, let's go for it because it's part of my life. So the service for me, my perspective of service is giving. I'm not just giving, giving as much as you can because the thing is that it's when you give that you truly give. Giving, not, I'm not talking about money. I'm, I'm talking about holistic giving, giving of right. your time, giving of your effort, giving of your resources and not expecting anything back. And I think for me, that's where the grandstand is service it's a lifestyle 
Yeah. And do you, do you feel that it was equally your Yoruba family uh, traditions and backgrounds mm. alongside your uh, church life that gave you the values and to that sort of put you on that path? Was it one over the other or were they fairly balanced, do you think? Um, it's quite interesting because, <laughs> as I said, like, you know, the the culture from home was you have to respect everybody. So, and yeah. the respect is you have to serve. And the Yoruba culture is really rich in that you respect people that are even one day older than you. They are your elders. <laughs> That's how, how deep the culture is. And I think that yeah. gave perspective to whatever it is that you did. So if you're going to be serving because of the respect you have for it, you're not going to be doing it grudgingly, even though sometimes you're kind of inclined to do it. But you do it so that when you finish, when the person is like um, reciprocating or the kind of like, um, what will I say you now? Really appreciating what you've done. Mm -hmm. That's when you now actually feel, oh, yes, I actually did this. This person appreciates it. And that's a good thing. And I think for the Christian background, again, especially going to church and serving people, even as a small child, you were expected to serve older people, you were expected to give, and even your peers as well. So they are kind of like intertwined and, you know, like a netted base just gave that cushion that, you know, this is what actually would lead you to meet people for the rest of your life but not just meeting people but to impact people's lives and i think that that's where it all you know consolidated so they really it sounds like went hand in hand yeah the values absolutely. that you received culturally and spiritually Very true, um, yeah. you know i grew up in a uh, a fairly conservative jewish uh, faith and when Jewish boys and girls turn, well, for girls, it's 12, boys, it's 13. We have a uh, coming of age uh, event, a uh, ceremony called a bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a mitzvah is, it can be translated as a blessing. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah. when you, it, it's really a crossing of the threshold and has so much to do with service. It mm. has a lot to do with stepping across the threshold into your uh, young personhood, male or female, no. and step, stepping up as a contributor, as a contributing member of society. And you're looked yeah. on yeah. as a contributor with obligations, with expectations mm. in your community. Um, I think this is a universal... Uh, trait. I have found similar coming of age um, ceremonies across cultures all over the world. Right. Um, did you go through something like that at a similar age? Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> I think for you it might be quite different because you moved around a lot. For we, for my, for myself and my family, we didn't really move like that. We mm -hmm. were more stationary around. So I think we were. We, we, we learned so much about the culture from home. I think the culture from home was really strong. I think that was really, really strong. And yeah. that actually, like, um, like almost like it fed into everything that we did. So um, you're going out and you know that when you're going out, there's a particular way you have to behave. Because if you behave contrary to what is expected, there's going yeah. to be trouble. So yeah. kind of like conscious, unconsciously informed about how you behave outside, how you talk mm. to people, because, you know, if you don't talk to them properly, it's going to come back to you. So it's going to not just come back to you. It's going to come back to your parents and then you get mm. the, whatever comes from there. But it, it was more of really understanding what the basic principle of you know, what leaving is. And I think that now, th this is where it actually caught across culture and, and spirituality, where, as you said now, this is almost like a life principle. And yeah. even though I didn't have this cross culture, because yeah, we, we lived in the North, which was quite different from the Yoruba culture, but 
in a way kind of similar because they too had the same kind of principles. So it, it wasn't kind of different how they did it. I think yeah, the, 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 the dynamics of how they did it, the, 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 the patterns of how they did it was different, but the principle was the same. So kind of whether you go to the east, whether you went to the west or to the north, they had a principle of respect and that respect fed into service. And basically knowing that you respect someone, you serve them at that level. And I think it was just normal to us at that time that we did that. So I think that's how I see it. Even though I didn't really move around, I think it was mm -hmm. all like coming towards me. It was coming towards us. It was like coming from the outside and coming inside, but everything was like kind of the same principle later. Did, did the expectations change at a certain age, like in a, in a certain age group? Like when you, obviously when you're five, yeah, you, you know, you have, you, there are expectations and there are, there's a, a, you know, there's a cultural sort of teaching mm -hmm. at that level, at an age appropriate level about mm -hmm. respecting elders which again i think is very universal and we'll be right back right after this <music> 21st century life skills warrant 21st century education every human being is born into a classroom each of us given the same homework the same core assignments personal care skills, emotional literacy, financial literacy, environmental literacy. These and other essential life skills are unique, learned and used by each of us every day of our lives. Indeed, they are the common thread in our humanity, core to individuals and the communities they construct, surviving and thriving. Raising the bar on life skills education for all. This is the mission of Parenting 2.0. Visit www.parenting2pt0.org for more information. Your generous sponsorship and individual support of the Lost Traveler podcast benefits the Lost Travelers Club a charitable project under the fiscal sponsorship of United Charitable, a nonprofit 501c3 organization. The Lost Travelers Club focuses primarily on the needs of parents who have outlived their beloved children. We recently launched our new Brain Candy Project wing, providing art supplies to children still struggling with critical or terminal health-related conditions. We hope to raise enough funds to launch Brain Candy, an arts and literature magazine created by and for these young people. Find out more at www.braincandy.online. Thank you. I know you have spoken to a lot of youth, mm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, in your time, a lot of schools, a lot of students. Is there is there a certain age, like an identified age shift in the expectations? Um, I think it it would vary um, as you get older, and the um, the variable basically is because you get older, you should be more matured, and you have more um, capacity to influence, and because you have that, you now have more responsibility to carry out this level of you know impact at a higher level so mm -hmm. a six, seven six year seven year old child is expected to do okay yeah you respect people you do that but by the time you start getting to 10 to 11 to 12 or basically to 13 now you're not just going to judge the rest of it, but then this is how you're not just going to be affecting those ahead of you you now have to start affecting those people coming behind you and that's yes. why it's almost like, oh, um, you shouldn't be doing that because there are people watching you. So that's where there's um, this idea that whatever you do, there's someone always watching you. And, you know, growing up in a family of, uh, you know, five children, like, you know, I had an elder brother and I have like three younger ones, brothers. Mm -hmm. And basically it was almost like whatever you do, they are watching you and they are going to emulate it as you 
move along. So you have to be careful. And I know that, yes, it wasn't almost like, yeah, you were doing all the, but that consciousness was there that whatever you, you do or whatever you did, there was someone always watching you. So that put everything into perspective. So the older you got, the more responsibility you had to actually, you know, keep the mantra. <laughs> and there was kind of a flow, it sounds like. Exactly. That there wasn't Absolutely. there wasn't a, a specific uh, like ceremony or coming of age saying, we now yeah. recognize that you have crossed the threat. You know it. And you're yeah, lucky. Exactly. You, had, yeah. you yeah. had both. Um, you, you could look up to your older brother, right? Mm. Your eyes were on him mm. and your younger siblings were looking to you. And I'm so glad we're talking about this because, um, you know, we, we, in, in mentoring youth, mm. it's a very important message that gets missed a lot today. And this is not just, this is not just in the U S I'm sure it's not just in Africa, but it is all over the world. Mm -hmm. where we have stopped mm -hmm. at large giving that message to young people that mm -hmm. you are empowered mm -hmm. to model for those coming up behind you. That's and right. when you are aware, when you're made aware by your mentors and your teachers and your leaders in your community mm -hmm. that, that younger eyes are upon you, mm -hmm. you carry yourself differently, don't you? That's right. That's right. That's and that's it. a very, very powerful thing. And I'm sure I know for me, that knowledge influenced me as a father as well. Mm -hmm. um, how is that? How has that journey impacted you in your parenting? How old is your son? He's um, five years old. You understand? Ah, I see. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's um, when when he came, I knew something different happened. You know, and I said. This is what I always say. I said, for everything that happens in my life, for everything, there's, mm. there's a part and there's a path. And and I know that, you know, that's why I always connect to the divine. Like, you know what? I need instruction. I need guidance. You know, sometimes I do foolish things. I do stupid things. But I need wisdom. <laughs> to do things right. And I'm, <laughs> I say this sometimes because I said, when my son came in and he started growing up, I said, I've seen a lot of things in him. And I said, wow. He came for a reason. He came to yeah. teach me how to leave. And when I saw, like, basically, sometimes you want to get angry, but then you have to control yourself. And then sometimes you want to say some things, but then you have to think about what you're saying. And sometimes you just, you just see what he does. And you just look at it and you say, wow, this boy came to planet Earth to teach me things I had missed a long time ago. And it, 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 it honestly, it blows my mind. And, you know, maybe, you know, people say it differently, but I see children as teachers because there's Absolutely. so many things that we, as growing up, kind of like have, I would not say unconscious, but kind of unconsciously just left behind us. Like, okay, yeah, I don't think I can do that. But these children now come in and they show us a part that you could actually do this and you're fine. You could actually like play with your child and see him giggle and giggle back at him and like just feel that flow without thinking, oh, why am I doing this? Oh, I'm so it's just the connection that you now feel is just reminiscent of a father and a son. So like my father and, and myself, or like my myself and my son, the connection that we build and the bond. And that's why I say it's very important that one realizes this that our children. You know, they teach us so much, but we need to be attentive because sometimes we want to just, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. But relax and just listen and observe. And you see that there's a lot of wisdom yeah. in what we get from them. There's a school of thought spiritually that says that we choose our parents mm. before coming yeah. in. Yeah, yes. not only for not only for what they have to teach mm. us, but what we can teach them right. in this lifetime, mm. you know. And, um, and I certainly discovered that with my son mm. and, uh, you know, we were talking about service. We're talking about life's per service as your life's purpose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every child, every single child that is born onto this planet mm. comes with a purpose. That's right. That's right. Right. And we, every one of us are teachers. Every one of us are students, no matter what our age mm. 
um, you know, I, I found for me, not only as a parent, but also as, um, as a son mm -hmm. and as a grandson, um, because I, I've been fortunate enough to have known all of my grandparents very closely. Okay. I've known pretty much all of my great grandparents and a great, great grandfather as well. <laughs> so talk about the wisdom <laughs> that's constantly yeah. streaming, you know, uh, from my ancestors. And, and I was able to really understand as you're talking about um, that, that children, um, they're not only our teachers, but they mirror mm. back to us mm. our inner children. And that's something that, for me, it's a big part of my work mm. as someone who is devoted to a life of service, mm. um, to remind people that there is a child still within you. Mm. And that child may or may not have gotten all of the tools that it required or needed at an early age, but not only do you get the fortunate of us, you know, and not everyone chooses to be a parent. There's no judgment there. Mm -hmm. But those of us who have the blessing of being a parent during our lifetime, mm -hmm. um, and, and no matter if, if we have children of our own, we are all in the parenting generation. Anyone who is of an age that is capable of having children, mm -hmm. guess what? We are in the parenting generation and all those eyes are upon us, aren't they? Yeah. Right? But we must remember that we have inner children that also need us to be parenting ourselves mm -hmm. and guiding. You know, you're, you talk about asking for guidance, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I think there's, there's so much wisdom uh, physically in the world around us. So many now with the internet, there, there's so many resources available at our fingertips. <laughs> Um, and some of us, like yourself, yeah. you know, are, are creating those resources. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then there's there's that spiritual side of things mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. that that you can draw upon. Um, you know, whatever one's faith is, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have all of the wisdom of the ages, all of the the people who are in your blood, in mm -hmm. your DNA. Mm -hmm who carry wisdom to you through your genes. That's right. Right? <laughs> um, so all the answers are there. Right. You just have to op be open to mm. receiving and and turning that receiving into giving, mm. right? Into yeah. being of service. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that, that I remember very profoundly after, soon after I became a father, I was visiting my grandmother who was still living and, and thank God she had this opportunity to meet her great grandson and him to meet her. And she saw me uh, playing with him mm -hmm. when we were on the floor, you know, <laughs> and we were giggling and we were laughing and playing. Mm -hmm. And she said to me later that it was so heartwarming to her wow. to, to witness this because in her generation, fathers did not ever wow. get on the floor with their children. The, yeah. They were lucky if they went out to have a picnic together on the weekend. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, the father would come home at the end of the day, pat your children on the head, send them to bed. That's right. And really have, have no connection with them. Right. So, you know, now we have as men, mm. um, I think, permission uh, yes. culturally, globally, mm -hmm. to get on the floor with our children and yeah. tap into that inner child, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like, <laughs> don't hold me back. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's well, what and, right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And in turn, you're giving that permission to your son. And, and that's it. Because the thing is, he's looking for, like, okay, he wants to play. I like, oh, no, no. I, 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 you know, you one gets to do that sometimes. And you say, but he wants to, like, really just have that time with you. Because this is one thing I know, or this is one thing I've seen, that if you don't spend that time with them now, when you actually want to spend that time with them, they're gone. And basically, it's almost like reality, like, just don't, like, spend the time with him, play with him, throw stuff with him, like, you know, throw yeah. him, carry him, jump on the bed, <laughs> like do that because jump on the bed. Exactly. <laughs> just do it and laugh. And you know, sometimes I look at and honestly, like this is almost like, and, and I know that it's in everybody. Like I'm looking at him, and sometimes it's just doing something, and I'm just watching him. And I'm just grateful for him. And you know, that 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 thing in itself, like, you know, I said, you know what. 
what can you, what would you give to make sure that this boy is happy? And, you know, yeah, you have to give like the discipline. You have to make sure you discipline. You have to make sure there are times when you laugh. There are times that you have to correct and stuff like that. But it's yeah. really good to have that time when you look at him as a boy that you can actually interact and play with and just watch him talk or watch him play or just ruffle yourself up. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, it, it's great, honestly. And, you know, whoever wants to try it, all you just need to do is just get down with them and they will teach you so much. <laughs> Give the gift of health this Father's Day with Vox Life. There's an online offer for customers where you buy two and get one free gift from select Vox Life products after filling in the shipping address. The offer is valid from June 5th to June 21st, and five lucky customers will win a free Apple iPad mini. Go ahead and check it out. The neuropath to faster wellness starts with Vox Life. Go to dianedinkmeyer.voxlife.com. That's dianedinkmeyer.voxlife.com. You'll be glad you did. I think we still struggle with that as, mm. as men globally. Yeah. I think we still struggle with um, expectations mm. and, and gender roles. Men are, are supposed to be the disciplinarians. Still, mm. uh, we're told not to cry. Man up, right? I hear yeah. a lot. Uh, <laughs> Man, what, does that mean? what does that even mean? Um, you know, but, but this, this sort of expectation to not be sensitive, to mm. not cry, Mm-hmm. and express our emotions mm-hmm. uh it, it, it it's seen in in very many places as a sign of weakness exactly right. um, i don't see it that way i see it no. as a sign of strength neither do I. yeah neither do I. Mm. yeah and so that that's a big part of this conversation i think you know yeah. being of service uh as a life's purpose i think that we have we have this opportunity to be authentic right as not only as men but as human beings mm-hmm. fully right mm-hmm. whole human beings be authentically ourselves that's right and anyone who is a witness mm-hmm. that automatically and effortlessly has permission to do the same and is empowered to do the same that talk a little bit about that because you are you're in the business literally yeah. of empowering people Right. And and transforming or, or guiding people, giving tools to transform lives, right? Mm-hmm. One life physically, mentally, spiritually even. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's part of that holistic. Talk a little bit more about that. What what moves you to to do that? I, I want to say this and I want to say it very clearly, like it's an awesome responsibility. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, because it's, you know, wh- wh- when you know, and it- it's it's interesting, like, this time, like maybe five, six, six years ago, I'd not really discovered that in clear terms. I would say, okay, yeah, this is what I need to do. I, I finished my PhD at the time. I felt that, okay, yeah. Yeah, now we're now going to consultancy. We now start, you know, building up this thing. And, you know, I started working as, um you know, a data analyst with a, with a company. And, but then that's when it now like hit me like, is this what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life with what you have? And I think mm. sometimes the problem is that we don't ask ourselves the right questions. We don't ask ourselves empowering questions because it was when I started asking myself empowering questions and do you just want to just sit and that's what you're going to be doing? I know this is part of service, but this is not you service. Like you service. This is not you, Yinka. This is not what you're supposed to be doing. What are you supposed to be doing? And I think for me, this is where that light bulb now came. And I went on the search. Mm. And when I went on the search, I took two days off, no contact with him. He said, I, I just by myself, what am I really supposed to be doing? Why am I supposed to be doing this? Because until you know the reason why you're doing something, you will just sit down there and just say, oh, you know what? I don't think that's for me. Once you understand the reason why, nothing stops you. And I know this guy, you know, I, I love him. Yeah, <laughs> he's called Paul the Preacher, <laughs> but he was known as Paul the Slayer. 
He said in one mm. of the chapters in the Bible, he said, I am obligated. And so no matter what happened to him, whether I was stoned, whether I was beaten, whether I was shipwrecked, he said, I am obligated. And no matter what comes, I have a passion for this. And the thing is that without the right obligation, without obligation, without purpose, without passion, you would just withdraw because the challenges will always be there. So life of service has always been there, but now you now have to take it on a global level. You don't just mm. say, okay, yeah, I serve and everything. See, there's a reason why I moved from Nigeria to the UK. There's a reason why I, you know, I took those two days off because it was time for me to show up. You know, most people live in quiet desperation and just waiting for something to just happen. No, I know that I was built to make things happen. And if I know that I have an obligation to show up, and if I must show up, I must be, not do. And that's, those are the things that now started coming to my mind. So if I must serve mm. people, I must be service so that I could serve. You know, I could serve because I am being it now becomes something that is continuous, not something that is stationary. And so uh, for me, like as a transformation coach, I have an obligation, you know, to impact people, not just with knowledge, but also with the right tools to help them achieve the things they want to. You know, creating a platform where people now start getting more aware of what their health and the impact it will have to their life. It's an it, mm. it's a big responsibility, but then you know with responsibility comes great resources. So basically, you must have those resources to be able to impact. So you study, you read, you research, you read, you 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 watch, you you do a lot of things. So for me, that has just been my life. Now I have to read, I have to compare, I have to analyze. So this is where my background of research has now come in. And you see, that's why I say sometimes we go in through some learning process, some school of thought so that we can learn. So by gathering all this information, I'm now able to inform people. I'm now able, I'm now more informed so that I can inform people better. And the better I inform people, the better the transformation. It's going to happen. So my life of service is all encompassing. It's holistic. It's, I have to be doing something on a regular basis to make sure that why um, the, the service I give is quality service and is of standard and no one is telling me to do this I give myself that obligation so that basically it's a requirement for me I require that for myself yeah. and that's the reason why I wake up at 3 30 in the morning or, or four o'clock in the and I start my day because I know that whilst people are sleeping I have to be working so that when they are they show up and they're asking questions or they're asking for directions I'm able to impact them and I love this book from the book of Proverbs I love it so much it says me uh, wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and once you're getting wisdom yeah. get some understanding with it that yeah perfect so whatever we do we need wisdom even though you have the right amount of knowledge even though you understand it but you need the wisdom to be able to apply that that is part of service so bringing all of these things together it's just like you know what you are powerful beyond measure you have to know that so that when you impact people you have to transmit that same energy and that's why when people talk and if they say oh yeah you have so much energy i said yes because it's coming from a place of energy too from the <laughs> it is yeah. pure energy <laughs> so it, it is that's a big that yeah. This place. yeah it's brilliant honestly it's an amazing experience and uh, i'm glad i'm operating at that level now <laughs> i'm glad you are too and this is you know again this when we talk about universal life skills mm. this transcends culture okay. this transcends socioeconomic mm. status mm. this transcends age mm. this transcends uh spirituality this is a universal quality this is a skill that every single person on the planet will learn that's right in throughout their life mm. at different levels different levels as you say of maturity in, in ancient greece mm. in delphi mm -hmm. uh above the the cavern where the oracle yep. uh, of delphi and, and the great what does it say it says know thyself that's right <laughs> i have one there there always yeah, <laughs> yeah. right mm. and it, it all starts with knowing yourself i i i had this epiphany a long time ago that 
um, that there's a difference, distinct difference, and I think you'll agree with mm -hmm. me, um, between a job and one's work. Absolutely. The job, the job is the bank, right? Yeah, it's yeah. the job, it's the thing that you do to make, you know, pay the rent and, mm -hmm. you know, put food in your stomach and, you know, it's day in and day out and you're not getting ahead at all. You're patting someone else's pockets. Exactly. You're working for them, right. paying you. Mm -hmm. And... And it's it's you're in the hamster wheel, yeah. You're just just spinning and spinning and spinning. <laughs> but you know, and it's the thing you can't wait to forget about when you get home that's at the true. end of the day. That's <laughs> it's the thing you can't wait to go on holiday, mm -hmm. take a break, and and someday retire so you can start living. Mm -hmm. No, start living now. Yeah. right. Is that now with the Do time? Don't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, and, and the difference in work, doing your work. This is your purpose. This is your face, and this is your integrity in the world. Yeah. This is your your obligation, not only to humanity, yeah. but to yourself yeah. and your values and the values that your ancestors have passed down to you. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, obligation, what goes hand in hand with obligation is gratitude. Aye. That's brilliant. <laughs> that is brilliant. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's a there's a saying I don't know if it's if it's everywhere but I know in the United States uh, it's an old saying people don't really say it anymore but in order to express gratitude I would say to you much obliged I'm much obliged mm. Mm. right mm -hmm. I can say to you that I'm much obliged that you took the time and energy <laughs> to come and join me on my podcast today. Yeah. And and I, that means that I'm obligated to you. We have this connection now. That's and, right. and you know, and there, there with with that comes obligation. There's mm -hmm. a responsibility, but but really it's it's wrapped in a in a cloak of gratitude. Yeah. And so as we're coming to the end of this amazing session i know it's gone so fast yeah i um, was just watching the time i said wow <laughs> you have to come back. you're totally gonna have to come back we have so much more to talk about yeah um give give me give our, our listeners um three three main uh takeaways that you want them to leave this episode with right um universal and it's always a number one why are you here? That's a little question. Mm. Why are you here? Number two, what are you supposed to do? Number three, who are you supposed to do that to? Or who is supposed to benefit from what you do? So first of all, why are you here? This is where you go for a search. You have to search. You have to know that. Once you discover that, you, you now go into, what will I do with what I have? What do I have? Your gifts, your abilities, and, you know, all these different things that come together, the skills that you've learned because of that. Then number three, who do I serve? Mm. Who am I supposed to serve? Once these three come in, I'm telling you, that's a powerhouse. And I always tell people, if you don't know who you are, if you don't know why you're here, if you don't know what you need to do, you do anything that anyone asks you to do. But once you know that, you just ignite. And I always tell people, you're dynamite once you discover yeah. it. And for me, that's what keeps me going. That's what gives me the energy. That's what makes me Yinka. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Yinka. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. So Yinka much. wrote the book on yeah. Yeah. finding life, the treasure of a life with a purpose. Absolutely. Yes, I found it. Yes, yes um, I found you, it. Listeners, if you go to uh, into the the episode description mm -hmm. at the bottom, there are links to uh, the book. Yes, I found it. Yep. Discover the treasure of a life with a purpose, mm -hmm. uh, and also links to get fit with Yinka on Instagram. That's right. Get fit with Yinka on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> you brand new and congratulations, Thank you mind so much. Yep. Thank you. Mind Fitness Base, it's available on both Apple and Android, yes? Yeah, so it's, it's still coming up on Android. We're still working on that, but it's available right now on Apple. I'll be updating. Oh, okay. because, yeah, it's ab available now on Apple, but the Android... And it's still working. available on Android, yeah. too. Yeah. Great. Well, best of luck with that. Thank Many you. blessings 
to you and your family. I really appreciate and that. Thank you, thank you so much. And we'll definitely be seeing you again. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. You've been listening to The Lost Traveler with Henry Cameron Allen. For more information, please visit www.henryallen.org. Thanks so much for tuning in, and let's all keep striving for a better world. Thank you.